Hello everybody, this is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music. And in this video, we're going to get into Orb Composer, in particular, the new feature that came out, which gives you uh, control over rhythmic tempo. So let's go ahead and take a look at this template. I've What I've done is I've created the piano template, so it automatically populated the instruments with four pianos. I'm going to bring the, temp the uh, tempo down to 70 beats per minute globally. So then I'll go ahead and put in a uh, theme block. And I'm going to change the key to C minor. And also we'll go ahead and put in a bar item of eight measures. And I'll go ahead and extend this window a little bit. And we'll, if you go um, command and then roll your scroll wheel up, it'll shrink a little bit. So now we've got it in view, all the eight measures. And so Let's go ahead and, in this particular block, just go ahead and create everything. And so I have a melody, background, accompaniment, and I'm going to change the uh, this track here instead of a background, since we already have a background there, I'll change it to a bass. Okay, so now we have melody, background, accompaniment, and bass. Now, let's go ahead and listen to what we've got. So we actually have the uh, melody in this track here. We have the background, which gives you chords, chord background. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and custom that a little bit. There's a roll background, the dynamics, uh, piano rhythm right now. We're just using these defaults. Register, uh, medium register, polyphony. We have up to five notes polyphony if we want. Actually, since we're only using triads, we'll just go ahead and use polyph polyphony three. A different chord notes doesn't apply. So now we have it. Okay, so that's the melody. So now we have the, the background that we altered a little bit. And then let's take a look at the accompaniment. We have the dynamics, um, medium stock uh, rhythm here, the average for momentum, which is the number of notes per measure, and then the complexity rhythmically is very low. And then, of course, we can change the rhythmic complexity here. Uh, the register, medium, polyphony, one, different chord notes, up to three different chord notes. So let's go ahead and solo the um, background track. Now notice the momentum, which is the number of notes per track, uh, can be controlled here for each of the measures. And by holding down the shift key, you can raise it up, give, gives you more notes per measure and so on. So let's just hear what it is at medium momentum. So we're basically getting eighth notes because each of these is a measure and it's 
going eight times per measure. So if we go into the, the rhythm, we could, we could actually slow that down by going very low. So notice the difference. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So that way we're getting one beat per measure of the uh, chord background. Now we could also achieve the same thing and actually even more by getting into the, the new feature here. Now let's suppose we want two per measure. So if I choose half note and then clear, so this would be and double click. So that way we'll get a half note each measure of our chord. And if we want a whole note, we could do that. Clear, double click. So you get one chord per the entire four beats in the measure. Um, and if you wanted more activity, you could do quarter notes and then, so if I click I double click in each of these cells. Now I have four notes per quarter, so per measure, so that would sound like this. So, so let's go ahead and go with that for the um, background track. Now let's examine the accompaniment track. Now this can give you arpeggios. Let's go ahead and uh, solo that. So if we want, um, actually that's just about right. That's about the right kind of um, number of notes per measure we want. Now, just to illustrate the custom rhythm and rhythmic feature, suppose that we want it even faster. Maybe we want, so we click here, maybe we want 16th notes. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, we're still getting eighth notes. Let's go back. Let's clear it. Put it in 16th. Notice we have these slots now. If I uh, fill steps, that should give us 16th. Let's try that. There we go. So that gives us more rhythmic activity in the accompaniment. Now the background, okay, we want to change that to a bass. Okay, there we go, apply. So let's go ahead and listen to the bass track now. Okay, so we're getting one note per measure. And if we go into the, the, the dynamics are fine, the rhythm, if we want to change that, maybe instead of one note per measure, maybe we'll want two notes per measure. So if we do a half note and then double click here, double click there, then we'll have two notes per measure. So let's listen to that. Okay, now let's go ahead and listen to uh, everything together.
Okay, now that we have our melody, background, accompaniment, and bass set up, let's go ahead and orchestrate that. So I'm going to bring the DAW over, and then we're going to go ahead and hit record. Okay, so we got the uh, 16 measures. It was on repeat, so it went and started the beginning measure again. So let's go ahead, now that we have captured the MIDI data in the, the DAW, so here you have your four tracks. So we'll go ahead, what I'm going to do is put them in these four tracks here. So I'll go ahead and pause the video while I do that. So here's the result of putting the MIDI data into these four tracks. And I added a fifth track where I uh, improvised a solo violin over the arrangement here. So let's listen to what that sounds like. So that's the conclusion of this video. Hope that was helpful in getting a handle on how the rhythmic feature works in Orb Composer, the new rhythmic feature. So this is Bill McFadden. If you like this music, please click like. If you like this video, then uh, please do subscribe. So Bill McFadden, setting off from Tone Pure Music.